I thought I'd do a video about uh, voltage drops because uh, it's such a powerful tool in uh, diagnosing electrical problems in an electrical circuit. Um, hopefully you have a, a basic understanding of electrical theory so uh, you get more out of this video. But if you don't, I'll uh, try and present a, a simple explanation so you can at least understand what uh, a voltage drop is and how to use it to uh, diagnose uh, electrical problems. I've got a simple circuit here where I've uh, connected a, a light bulb and a switch to a, a voltage source. Um, in this case, it's a battery. Um, if I was to turn on the switch, current from my voltage source would flow from the battery to the light bulb and then back to the battery. Whenever you have current flow through a circuit, uh, if that current comes in, comes in under the influence of anything that's creating resistance, you're going to get a voltage drop. And we know that's true because of Ohm's law, which states that uh, current times resistance will give you voltage. Somewhere in this circuit, you'll have points where the wire connects to the light bulb, um, where the wires connect to the switch, and uh, where the wires connect to the battery. Um, normally, we like to think of connection points and, and the wires as having no resistance, just allowing current to uh, freely uh, flow through them. But in actuality, um, all these things, the connection points and the, the wires, have some, some resistance. And that's what makes, uh, makes uh, using voltage drops so effective in diagnosing problems in an electrical circuit. Uh, when, when all the connection points are good and, and everything's uh, new and, and the wires are new, you're going to have a very, very small voltage drop and it's going to be insignificant. But the older this circuit gets, um, the more corroded these, these connection points get. Um, the more they, they loosen up over time, uh, the more resistance it's going to create in this circuit. And because of Ohm's law, when you have resistance and you have current flowing through whatever's creating that resistance, you're going to get voltage drops. Whenever you have a connector that's loose, damaged, or corroded, or a wire that's broken or corroded, um, it's going to produce more resistance than normal and that higher resistance is going to cause a higher voltage drop to be across that connector or wire. Um, the higher the resistance, the higher the voltage drop. And when that happens, what it does is it robs uh, voltage or power from the circuit. So for example, in this uh, simple uh, light circuit, if this connector was bad, it would, it would drop more voltage across this connector than normal. And it's, what it's doing is it's taking that voltage that would normally be across the light bulb and it's, it's removing it from the light bulb and it's it's uh, consuming that power in this connector and that would the, the result of that would be that the light bulb would would glow dimmer than normal um, the way that I could uh, test something like that um, in an accessory circuit when I say accessory circuit I'm, I'm talking about like a light bulb circuit or a you know tail light um, turn signal or headlight or something I could take my negative lead um, and test, the way that I would test the negative side of this circuit is take my negative lead, put it on the, the negative terminal of the battery, and then take my positive lead and, and connect it, uh, you know, with the, the connector nearest to the um, light bulb. And I would measure the voltage drop um, through, the, through the negative side of this circuit. It shouldn't be greater than 0.2 volts. Um, if it is greater than 0.2 volts, then you got to go through and check each connector, check the voltage drop across each connector, check the voltage drop across each wire and find the connection or wire that's you've got a, that's causing that high voltage drop and and repair it. Um, if this checked out good then I would go to my, go to my positive um, side of the circuit, um, put my positive lead on the positive terminal and put my negative lead um, on the connector nearest to the uh, light bulb and uh, measure the voltage drop and on the positive side it's also um, it shouldn't be greater than 0.2 volts and if it is greater than 0.2 volts then, then I'd go through and I would um, find every connector um, measure the voltage drop across every connector until I find that that uh, that connector or wire that's creating the high voltage drop I can also test the voltage drop across this switch um, the switch has contacts in it and it should also um, be making good contact and have a very low voltage drop so um, switches can be a source of problems if I get a high high voltage drop across this switch it may be what's causing um, a high voltage drop across the positive side of the circuit 
Um, this type of circuit, um, this type of testing is, call, is, is also called uh, dynamic testing. And what I mean by that is um, I can I have to turn on this switch. I have to have current flowing through this circuit in order to test for voltage drops. Um, if there's no if there's no current uh, flowing through the circuit, then I'm not going to have any voltage drops. So um, the circuit needs to be on. Here's an example of a very simplified starter circuit. Um, I've got my battery. I've got my uh, the big black uh, wire that connects to the negative terminal of the battery that connects to the frame. Um, the big red wire that connects to the positive terminal of the battery goes down to the uh, starter solenoid and then my starter is grounded to the engine through the body of the starter. Let's say for instance I'm using this simple starter circuit in a, in a small lawn and garden tractor and I, I go to turn over the tractor and it, it just doesn't turn over as fast as it normally would. Um, I would start the process of trying to diagnose the problem by checking the battery voltage, make sure that the battery is fully charged and in good condition. Then I would take my DC voltmeter and I would take my negative lead and I would place it on the um, negative terminal of the battery and I would take the positive lead and, and place it on the body of the starter. Then I would turn over the engine and measure the voltage drop. And what I'm doing is I'm measuring the negative side of this circuit and my voltage drop on the negative side should never be more than 0.4 volts. Um, if it is higher than 0.4 volts, then I would try and narrow it down and check each connection. I would check where the starter connects to the, is bolted to the engine. I could check where the engine is bolted to the frame. Um, because the current is flowing from the starter back to the, uh, the negative terminal, so it has to go through the starter, through the engine, through the frame. Um, it's going to go through the connection where the negative cable connects to the frame, and it's going to go through the connect negative cable and um, and the connection where the negative cable connects to the negative terminal of the battery. Um, I could also check the uh, I could check the cable itself and check for a voltage drop. Um, the negative terminal of the battery I shouldn't have a voltage drop um, if I if I check the wire and the voltage drop between the wire and the terminal of the battery it shouldn't be greater than 0.2 volts. Once you uh, determine that the negative side of this circuit is in good working order you can come over to the positive side Take your uh, positive meter lead, uh, connect it to the positive terminal, and then uh, follow the wire all the way down to the solenoid, and then connect the negative lead where the wire uh, connects to the solenoid, and um, turn over the starter and check the voltage drop. On, um, on systems or engines that are, are small, like under 750 cc's, um, a, good, a good number, a good rule of thumb is the voltage drop shouldn't be more than 0.4 volts. But if you're if you're checking a system that's on a a, a big vehicle like uh, let's say a Harley Davidson touring bike, um, it, the voltage drop can can be as high as 0.8 volts. It just depends how big the engine is because the bigger the engine is, the bigger the starter you need, and the more current that the uh, starter is going to draw from the battery. Um, if I do get a, a voltage drop that's that's out of range, I can go and do the same thing again and try and narrow it down and and um, check voltage drops across the wire, check voltage drops across the connections, and try and find that connection or wire that's uh, causing the large uh, voltage drop. There's a couple of things that can affect voltage drop um, besides, um, you know, corroded, corroded connections and, and uh, bad wires. Um, the size of the wire can affect how much resistance the wire has. Um, the longer the wire is, the more resistance it will have, and the uh, thicker the wire is, the less resistance it will have. So um, the size and length of the wire will, will affect the, uh, the diameter and length of the wire will affect the voltage drop. It's probably not something you need to worry about, and I'm not trying to muddy the waters or make this seem more complicated than it is, but uh, I just think it's something I should mention. Um, also, uh, but the size of the engine, the larger the engine, um, for example, the, the larger the starter you're going to need and the larger, larger the starter is, the more, more current is going to draw from the battery. So the more current you have running through the system or circuit, uh, the larger your voltage drops are going to be. Um, like I said, uh, these numbers are just a rule of thumb. Um, they're the numbers that I go by. They, they seem helpful and reliable to me. Um, I'm sure if you ask someone else, you might get a different opinion. Uh, but uh, like I said, they're the wires that I, they're the not the wires, but the the values that I use. Um, so I think now I'll I'll pull in a, a Craftsman tractor and uh, do some voltage drops on video, so you can you can see the see see the results of uh, some real life examples.
This is the 12-volt uh, battery on a uh, Craftsman GT5000 tractor, and what I'm going to do now is check, check the uh, voltage drop on the negative side of the uh, starting circuit of this tractor. Um, I've got a ground wire here connected to the negative battery terminal, which connects to the frame behind this, um, this plate here. And then uh, I've got my starter here. And what happens is that current flows through the starter, then through the body of this starter, through to the uh, engine. It's mounted to the uh, engine, bolted to the engine. Current goes from the start body of the starter to the engine, to the frame of the tractor, and then back up through this um, negative cable to the battery. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to connect my um, negative uh, lead from my multimeter, which is going to be set to measure DC voltage. I'm going to connect it to the negative lead to the terminal of the battery and then the positive lead I'm going to touch the the frame of this um, frame of this uh, starter and then I'm going to turn the starter over and uh, measure the voltage drop. So I got to use this uh, alligator clip um, jumper wire because it just makes it easier because I only have two hands. I'm going to connect this to the negative terminal of the battery and this is connected to my negative lead of my meter. Then I'm going to um, take my positive lead from the meter and connect it to the uh, body of the starter and turn the engine over and measure the voltage drop. Okay, I've got the meter connected and the leads connected, so I'm now going to turn over the uh, turn over the tractor and and uh, see what kind of voltage drop we get on the negative side of the circuit. This thing keeps moving. Hopefully, you can read that. So it's getting uh, about uh, 0.12 volts, which so that's well below 0.4 volts. So um, the negative side is uh, in good shape. Now I'm going to take my uh, leads and go to the uh, positive side. So now what I'm going to do is take my positive lead and connect it to the positive terminal of the battery, and then I'm going to um, the large red wire uh, that connects to the the battery runs all the way down to the uh, starter solenoid here. I'm going to take my negative lead and connect it to the end of this wire and then turn the engine over and uh, oops, turn the engine over and check the voltage drop. For this engine it shouldn't be over 0.4 volts. Okay, so I've got the positive lead through this uh, jumper wire connected to the positive terminal. Um, other end of the jumper wire has got the uh, got the positive lead from the from the uh, multimeter. And then I'm going to take the negative lead of the meter and connect it to the end of this red wire right here and hold it here then turn the engine over and uh, check the voltage drop uh, for this engine like I said it shouldn't be over 0.4 volts So that was, uh, that was about, what, 0.09, so it wasn't even 0.1 volts, so um, all the connections on the positive side of my starting circuit are working good. I hope you were able to uh, take the information and examples I presented, presented in this video and use them in your own uh, motorcycle and small engine repair work. Um, I'm not trying to create an encyclopedia on uh, voltage drops. Um, I'm just merely trying to present enough information where you can... Um, make some sense of it and take one or two examples away and apply it to your own uh, repair work. Uh, if, if, if I made a mistake or there's something you don't like about the video, then please leave a comment and let me know because um, I can either take the information and use it to update the video or the description of the video, or I can uh, use the information to improve uh, any future videos I do. But uh, I just wanted to, to take the time and, and say I appreciate everyone that watches my videos and um, I hope you find them helpful.